In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. These things he said while teaching in the synagogue in Capernaum. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So we're getting to the central part of the discourse on the bread of life. Jesus has been leading up to this. He is telling the Jewish people about the Eucharist, preparing them for the Eucharist. The man in the desert, the, the multiplication of the loaves, all of that is a foreshadowing, ultimately, of the Eucharist, in which Jesus gives himself his body and blood, soul and divinity, in the form of bread and wine. And he, and he says it right here. He doesn't mince words. He doesn't say, this is just symbolic. I'm just speaking metaphorically or anything like that. No, he says, no, at least, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you will not have life within you. Right? And so, um, and so that's what the Eucharist is. True, the, the true body and blood of Christ body, blood, soul, and divinity of Christ in the form of bread and wine. And Jesus says something else, that that when those who eat my flesh and drink my blood remained in me and I in them. The word remain here is um, the same word that he uses to describe his relationship with the Father. The Father remains in me and I remain in him. And then he goes on to explain, yeah, just because, and just as I have life because of the Father, those who eat my bo- flesh and drink my blood will have life in me. So it calls for this intimacy, the sharing in the life of Jesus when we receive the Eucharist. And so this is uh, really important. This is the key to our, to our faith. And, um, you know, I was talking to, interviewing Sister um, Vincent Marie, and, and, and she had met uh, Mother Teresa, and she, you know, she said that Mother Teresa was telling her all these places that we, she was going and all, and all these things that she was doing, and she said that, that um, uh, there are places that won't allow priests to go there, and she said she will not go there. If, if, if they don't allow a priest, she will not go there. And why? Because of the Eucharist. She needs the Eucharist every day for her and her community. Right? Without the Eucharist, there, she, she cannot be there. And so she knows the value, the importance of receiving the body and blood of Christ daily. And that's what those, you know, those priests and nuns that I've been interviewing, they all say the same thing, the importance of the Eucharist, how we should receive it daily if possible. Right? It really unites us to, to, to God. It, it helps us to participate in His divine life. And, 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 and so that... And so we, it is very, very important. We give you thanks, Jesus, for reminding us of your true presence in the Eucharist and how important it is for us to receive you, your body and blood in the Eucharist in order to remain in you, to be one with you, and to share in your life. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.